Hey, hi, good morning. How are you? How you been? I am really excited to do this. I have watched Miss Telebrico and Miss Hill do their videos and sequences and they've done a beautiful job. I'm really excited to work with you finally. My name is Mr. Heskestad or Mr. H. I teach woodworking at the high school and I miss it. I miss being in the classroom. I miss seeing you people. I miss interacting in person. I put a whole lot of thought into this project, this sequence of experiences we're gonna have, and I'm really excited to try it out with you. I think instead of showing you now what the end result will be, I'm hoping to lead you on a series of, of steps, um, to lead you along a path to making things that are excellent, making things that are beautiful, making things that are well-crafted. Those are the things I really care about, and the ultimate piece I wanna make is something I'm really excited to try myself, and I'm really excited to see what you do with it. To get there, we need to start with, we need to all be using the same language and that's where we'll begin today. My approach to distance learning is basically, I don't wanna waste your time. I want you to do good work. I want you to work hard. I want you to do excellent things, but I don't wanna sit here and say more than I have to. So my intention with these videos is to make them as short as possible, to make them as densely packed as possible, knowing that you can always go back and rewatch the video, but you don't have to sit here now and just wade through me being like blah, 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 blah. That's me, that's where I'm coming from. Okay, so um, the language, what we need to start with, we need to start, let's see, where do we need to start? So far, a lot of things we've done in here have been very loose and very free. I'm gonna flip the script on that and I want you to be as perfect as possible, as precise as possible. I want you to deliver something that's awesome. That's, that's perfect. Where we need to start with things is we need to have a common language and we need to, we need to be speaking the same language. We need to be talking in inches and fractions of an inch. And I realize it's not fair for me to just dive into this project without doing an explanation of rulers and inches. Uh, I'll keep this brief, but I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page here. But let's talk about rulers for a second. Here's one, uh, this is a little six inch ruler. It's very nice. Maybe we can zoom in. There we go. Uh, this is a six inch ruler. What we really need to do is to break down the inch. Basically, we want to break down from here to here and talk about all the little things that happen in between. If you've done this before, I'll try and keep it fast. If you haven't, I'll try and be as clear as possible what happened in between the zero and the one. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more dramatically here on um, this here piece of paper. Um, what we have, this is zero inch and that's one, which is exactly the same as what we have here. It's just a blown up version of what's happening from here to here. We're gonna be working with precision here. So I'm gonna ask you to do things in quarters of an inch, eighths of an inch, and sixteenths of an inch. I wanna define that really clearly. So if this is zero inch and this is one inch, one inch long here, half of that is gonna be a half inch. Um, and then half of that is gonna be a quarter inch. And I made, I made this for you so you can download this, you can have this. Um, there's a PDF on the main page called breakdown of a ruler or something. So if, if you're unclear of things, I made this so that you can see all the divisions of an inch. In between zero and one, we have a half. In between zero and half, we have a quarter inch. In between zero and a quarter, we have an eighth of an inch. And you're in between zero and an eighth, we have a sixteenth of an inch. And there's a lot of equivalencies. The finest lines we have on here, those are all sixteenths of an inch. A lot of rulers will tell you what kind of scale we're working in. So this one, for instance, if we look real close, do you see the little eight that's over there? What that's telling you is each of the little lines on this side is an eighth of an inch. If we flip it around, there's a sixteenth of an inch right there. That's saying each of these littler lines is a sixteenth of an inch. A lot of rulers, you can pick them up and you'll already know what scale you're working at. And that's real nice. Other rulers, such as this one, don't. So then you're left to your own devices a little bit. So you have to, in between the four and the five, the way I do it is I go, there's a half and there's a quarter and there's an eighth and there's a 16th. So we know there's 16 lines in between. This ruler we're working at the 16th inch scale. And what I want to show you on this paper is that, you know, this is a 16th inch scale here, but one eighth of an inch is the same as two 16th. If you have to mark something every eighth, you can just count over one, two, there's one eighth. One eighth is the same as two 16th. 2 eighths is the same as a quarter inch or 4 sixteenths. So it all adds up and breaks down. If you're having any trouble with those, print one of these out. Have this at the ready because it explains along the bottom exactly whatever numbers we need to have. I'm gonna assume that you're fairly comfortable with the ruler and not take any more of your time on this. I'm gonna bang across to the next thing we have to talk about before we can really get into this. The next thing we need to talk about is the lines that we're gonna draw. Actually, let me introduce the first assignment first. The first thing we're gonna do is this which is pretty bright. It's a sheet you're gonna fill out really carefully. 
and your grade on this depends on how carefully you fill out the lines in here. I want to make sure your technique is good. Let's, um, let's go over to the computer real quick. This is the digital version of the sheet so you can see it better. So what you're going to do is fill in this square. This is a three inch by three inch square. And you'll notice on the top, there's a part that says the mark track. That's where I want you to actually make the little dots that you're going to use to draw the lines across here. And I'm going to demonstrate the whole thing. I'd never ask you to do something that I wouldn't myself do. So I'm going to show you, I just want you to see exactly what we're dealing with. So this piece of paper, it's a PDF that's on the power school page. It is called, I should know, it is called straight line drawing PDF. Things to keep in mind when you print this out, actually, let's go through that. Let's go back to the computer for a second here. When you go to print that, when you go to print, make sure you see right here where it says actual size. That's important. That's very important. If you don't, it, it's going to shrink it or fit it to the page, which is going to make the squares a little smaller. And I've designed this for the squares to be three inches by three inches. Make sure you go actual size and print that, all right? Actual size, for sure, do that. Back to me, hi, how you doing? All right, so what this is telling us to do is to draw lines every quarter inch with a pen. And on this side, I want you to do every quarter inch with a pencil. And the reason I want you to do that is because the width of the line really makes a difference. With a pen, for instance, if we use one of the 0.05 microns, this is the, the, the micron, micron 0.05. This is a, uh, I can't even focus on it. This is a very fine point pen. So we should be able to make dots exactly where we want them and we should be able to draw those lines super carefully and beautifully. With pencil, it's gonna get a little bit more difficult because you're gonna start with a really sharp pencil point and as we draw the lines, it's gonna get a little bit more blunt. Then you have to make adjustments with the ruler to be accurate or you have to keep sharpening your pencil. I want you to have the practice of doing that. I'm not trying to waste your time so much as to make a point through your repetition. Let me demonstrate one of these right now. So here's what I want you to do for the first thing. We're gonna start with this one, the one that says every quarter inch pen. And what I want you to do, exactly what I want you to do is this. We have the part here that says mark track. That's where I want you to put the marks. So I want you to put marks above the box and below the box. And then we're gonna draw lines across. I'm gonna use the ruler. I'm gonna use the ruler like that. So you can see this is exactly three inches long. Now I'm just gonna make a dot every quarter inch on that center line. So it should look like this. And take your time and be really careful and be really neat. But that should be good enough. Then I'm gonna come across the bottom and do the same thing right on the, in the middle of the mark track. And the reason I made the mark track is because I want your squares to be really precise where your lines start and where your lines stop. Okay, so, oh, that's pretty bright. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put the ruler from dot to dot and draw across. So I'm putting it right on the dots knowing I'm using a really thin line. And I'm running the pen right along the ruler. You know, the angle that I hold the pen really matters. I was angling it in too much and it was making kind of a bad line. So now I'm holding it more straight up and down. But lining the ruler carefully up to the dots I drew really matters in terms of precision. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. If I'm gonna be critical, this line's too narrow. You see how that one's skinnier and that one's fatter? That's just me not being that careful. I mean, it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm not unhappy but that's where we're gonna start. Now, we're gonna do the same thing in pencil. I'm gonna use a Blackwing Palomino Pearl pencil. Love these pencils. A good sharp pencil point matters. Uh, this is actually a two hole sharpener. The left hand side sharpens the wood. Weird, right? Then the right hand side sharpens the lead. And that's a super nice point. Things to keep in mind. Points to grade and time. But we're gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna talk less and probably time lapse it so as not to waste your time. So we've got one line of dots. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. And the tinier the, the dot, the better, because it's gonna be more accurate. Cool, so we've got our dots again. Right now my pencil point is really sharp. So I should be able to put it on one dot there and one dot there and make a really nice clean line. Good, and then I can move down the line. As pencil points get dull, they get fatter and they don't necessarily draw right against the ruler. So then what you might need to do, like looking at this dot right here, sometimes you'll have to offset the ruler 
by just a little bit to get the pencil to draw from, from dot to dot. So be aware of that. I would encourage you always keep your pencil sharp, either run it through the, a sharpener. Some people, not me, are, are fans of using a knife to sharpen it. That's not really my school of thought. I'm gonna finish drawing these lines real quick. Keep your point sharp, that, that, that's the moral of the story. If you feel like your point's getting a little dull, touch it up and it's gonna keep you super accurate. And that looks pretty good. They both look pretty good. I'm not unhappy with myself. So now we're gonna ramp it up a little and we're gonna do every eighth inch, every eighth inch pen, every eighth inch pencil here. And then I know we're gonna do every 16th inch pen, 16th inch pencil here. This is all you have to do. This is the assignment to have um, done for next class. Students in my class will email the assignments in. In Miss Hill and Miss Talabrico's class, you will probably put it on a class wiki, but just check PowerSchool for that because they're gonna determine that. I'm gonna go through now and do the rest of them also because I wanna see how long it's gonna take and I wanna make sure it's not an unreasonable ask for you. Just work on taking your time and being precise. Make your marks at regular intervals. Keep your point sharp and just get into it. It won't take very long and by the time you're done, you should have something that looks like this. So those, and this is what it looks like when the computer does it. So there's the quarter inches, there's the eighth inches, and there's the 16th inches. And I think, I think the 16ths are gonna be a challenge. I think to do it well is gonna be hard. I'm just gonna let this run. I'm gonna time lapse it. I will see you back here when I'm done. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that so far. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do the 16th of an inch and that's gonna be, that's gonna be hard. I think that's gonna be like a legitimate challenge. I will probably time-lapse this one also. I think I messed up. I think, I think, I think I'm off somewhere. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from that side and come in the other way and see, but yeah, I think this is hard. This is, <laughs> this is really hard. All right. <laughs> what we can see is I wasn't careful enough. It's hard for me to sit here and lecture you and tell you to be careful when, when I didn't nail it. But what I found was I got more into it here. That went really nicely and from this side went really nice. I was just, I was just not careful in my dot making. Learn from my example. Be, be as precise as possible. This is pretty easy. This is fairly easy. You can see I had some, I had some issues here and this was downright challenging. I'm gonna try it again in pencil here, hopefully taking what I learned from here and carrying it over to here. Stay, stay, stay sharp. It's a lot of, it's a lot of lines. Nice, all right. Was it the most fun thing I've ever done? No, no, that wasn't super fun, but I'm pretty proud of this. That looks pretty good for me. Compare it to the, to the computer one. I blew, I messed that one up. That looks pretty good compared to that. Yeah, I'm okay with my work. That's it, that's what I want you to do. The whole thing's not gonna be like this. You're not gonna spend days just drawing lines. The, uh, the point is I wanna get you really comfortable using a ruler and being really conscious of the line weight that you're using because that will come into play as we start marking out shapes because we're going to we're going to need to mark things and cut things and fold things and and all of those decisions and all those things need to be super precise. So yeah, this is what I want you to do for today. Do this, turn it in and get some points. Honestly, I feel like going from the pen one to the pencil, I learned to slow down, to make marks more carefully and that I like pencil over pen. That's what I took away. What did you take away? What do you think? Okay, that's gonna do it for me today. Good luck with this. Take your time, be patient. Don't do, be too hard on yourself, but to whatever extent you can, just try and get into the flow of it and just, just do the work. Be, take your time, be careful, be present, and do the thing. Uh, all right, I'll see you back here next time. Okay, bye.